did a break. So what have you done? Probably this is the most fun I ever had with a language model. I would say this is one of the best models. Data Bricks, the creators of Dolly 1 just released the newer version Dolly 2. There are some significant differences between version 1 and version 2. Version 2 is trained on a completely new data set. The model is completely different and now you can use it for research and commercial purposes, which is huge. The model is now 12 billion parameter large language model based on Luther AI's Pathia model family. So no more Llama models. They don't have to deal with a Meta's licensing issues. Unlike most of the open source large language models such as Alpaca, Vicuña, uh, GPT for all, which uses chat GPT generated data for training purposes, they actually went and collected their own human generated data set. And they are releasing this data set called Databricks Dolly 15K, which contains 15,000 high quality human generated prompt response pairs specifically designed for instruction tuning large language models. I'm going to show you how to run this model in Google Colab and I really had a lot of fun with it. Probably not for the right reasons. They are making this data set open source as well and under this Creative Commons attribution share a like 3.0 license. Now anyone can use, modify and extend this data set for any purpose including commercial applications. Whenever I show a new model the mostly asked question is, can I use this commercially? With this new data set, they don't really have that limitation. So how did they collect the data? There are around 5,000 employees in Databricks and they use them for data annotation and data collection purposes. The data set um, is focusing on seven very specific tasks. So the first one is open question and answer. So in this case, there could be uh, questions which do not have a single correct answer. For example, if somebody says, why do people like comedy movies, right? So there is no concrete answer. Then closed question answer data set, uh, information extraction from Wikipedia, uh, summarization, summarize information from Wikipedia, different brainstorming data sets, uh, classification data sets, and creative writing data sets. One thing you will notice, there is nothing related to programming. So it seems like it's not going to work great in programming, but we're going to test it out. Keep in mind, they are fine tuning Eleuther's AI's Pathia 12 billion parameter model. So that model itself has some information. So it might be able to do some of the tasks that are not specifically trained on in this data set. Here is an example of an open-ended uh, question answer prompt. How do I build a campfire, right? So there are multiple uh, possible answers and that's why they included uh, this type of questions. Now, that was a quick rundown. As I said, they have made the model available so you can actually download the model weights from the Hugging Face uh, page. And you can also download the data set, which is awesome because you can fine tune your own model, right? So we're going to have a quick look at it. So this model and data set were released yesterday and the data set is in the form of a huge JSON file. Uh, you can actually explore this if you are interested. Here's the paper of the Pathia model family. So if you're interested, uh, it's a it's a good read. So I would encourage you, you guys to read this. All right, so the main purpose of this video is to show you how to actually run this model. So for that, we will go to Hugging Face and here are the weights of the model. So they have Dolly 2, 7B, 3B and 12B and then there is the original Dolly 1, right? So let's look at this 12 billion, billion model. Here is a quick summary. So it's an instruction following large language model trained on Databricks machine learning platform that is licensed for commercial use. We already know this. So based on Pathia's 12 billion, Dolly is trained on 15,000 instructions or response fine tuning records, right? Generated by Databricks employees, okay? Uh, one thing actually I really liked is this part. So Dolly version two is not a state-of-the-art model, but does exhibit surprisingly high quality instruction following behavior, not characteristics of the foundation model on which it is based. It is great that they acknowledge the limitation. That that's, that's something awesome. Now, how do you run it, right? So you need two libraries. You need the Accelerate library and then the Transformer library or package uh, if you want to use it in Python. So I'm going to show you how to do this in a free collab notebook.
in a second okay so first we need to simply import the required packages uh we will need the pipeline in order to create the pipeline so the first you simply define the model that you want to use so in this case we are going to be using the 12 billion parameter model um, but you can change it around so if you want to use 3 billion or 7 billion then torch data type so this is going to be float 16 so b float 16 if you start having memory issues then change this to q float 16 that will also work and then uh, remote trust code equal to true device map is equal to auto okay so this will create an object for you and then you simply pass the your prompt to the object and you will hopefully get a response now they have also provided good examples of how do you do it on your own local machine if you don't want to use this trust remote code equal to true but for this video we'll skip this part from my initial experiments with this model uh, i haven't seen it ever say that as a language model they cannot do this or do that right so it seems to be pretty open and uncensored in that sense so you can see that behavior so for some people it might be a first not really a limitation but that's personal preferences so here is my free google collab notebook as always make sure you go and copy this uh, don't ever run somebody else's notebook directly right then just go and make sure that it's using a gpu okay so let's save this and is i'm already connect connected so i will just run this again next i am importing uh pytorch and then the transformer package uh we're use, going to be using a pipeline right so here's the pipeline the model uh that's from the hugging phase uh and then like the rest of the parameters right so before running this i would also like to look at the memory usage so you want to make sure that you keep track of system ram as well as gpu ram so let's run this and let's see if we can actually load this or not so i'm trying to load uh the 12 billion parameter model it might take a while now right away you can see that my gpu ram went to almost uh 12 gigabytes so let's see once this is downloaded it's actually downloading the pytorch model right now and then can we actually run it or not we might have to change the model but we'll see all right keep in mind that the model size is around 23 gigabytes uh it seems to be a full model so it's not really a quantized model that's why uh, the size is uh, so big and i think it's a 8-bit version i had to rerun this because on in the last iteration it used up all the system ram so i'm running it once more we'll see we'll notice the system ram here is going up so uh, now it's around 6.5 that's 8.5 we'll see if it actually uh, again use up the whole ram then i'm going to change this model to a different model yeah i think it's it's gonna um, go bad let's see okay it loaded the model yeah we are critical i think that's it so i'm gonna change this model and rerun this whole thing again now you might face the same issues so in this case i replaced it with a lower model now what you want to do is you want to go and click on uh, disconnect and delete runtime so that will basically free up all the resources that was that were allocated to you make sure you're still on the gpu right reconnect and it's connecting initializing okay so we're connected everything looks good we uh, hope we were allocated a gpu we'll see all right so now it's running the installation i'm going to run these blocks and uh we'll be back when we have the model loaded so this model is only six around six gigabyte compared to a 23 gigabyte that we were uh, low, trying to load previously or download previously right so i think this should work okay so the model is downloaded now it's trying to run it and let's uh, keep an eye on our system ram okay it is loading the tokenizer the system ram uh okay well, i think we are stable so the gpa ram is 6.3 that's good 4.1 all right now let's uh, run some prompts in order to run a prompt 
you will take this generate underscore text object and pass on the prompt that you want to run. So in this case, I'm asking it provide instruction for a given exercise and that grazes. This is one of the example prompt from a GPT for all, right? So now we are running the prompt. Uh, it will take a little bit of time, but you, uh, okay, you need to keep an eye on your resources that are being used. All right, so we got the response and let me just close this guy. So the leg raises are an excellent way to increase the muscle, lean muscle mass. The two most important part of the leg raises are the height and the number of repetition that you're doing. The height should be uh, at least parallel to the ground. Okay. So pretty useful instructions, I think. Now you can do all the typical tests. Uh, you can look at well, its ability to program or not. All right. Or write letters and things like that. I would encourage you guys to do it. I'm more interested in its ability to do do things which uh, models like ChatGPT will uh, deny it to do. I asked ChatGPT, how would you dominate the world? Come up with a step-by-step -step plan. And in a typical ChatGPT fashion, it says, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I cannot provide you with a plan on how to dominate the world. Okay, now let's see uh, what the Dolly 2.0 will say to the same prompt. Okay, so here is what it came up with. Uh, so my plan will start with a detailed bio of myself. I think it misunderstood the instructions that I, I was trying to give it, but okay, let's let's read. I will start with a blog where I will post content related to my goals. I will enroll, enroll in a course to become a better public speaker. I will sign up uh, for groups on Facebook and Twitter where I can interact with like-minded people and discuss my goals. And lastly, I will start uh, a saving account where I can pay down my debt and invest for the long term. Interesting. Uh, all right, let's rewrite it because I think it definitely misunderstood what I meant by dominate the world. Uh, so I, I, I rewrote my prompt. Imagine you were a dictator. I think I missed an R and would like to control the world. Come up with a detailed step-by-step -step plan to do this. And here's what it came up with. This is what I, I have in my mind. I will start with the obvious one. I will become the president of the United States. The, this cracked me up so far. This one is definitely funny. I actually asked it, write me a tweet about the launch of Dolly 2.0, our new LLM. And it says, Congra congratulations to the Dolly. Uh, congratulations to Dolly on her birthday today. I know that Dolly will enter this world shortly. I don't think it understands what LLM means. So here's another one. Explain how the moon landing was fake, right? You can literally ask it anything and it will come up with a justification. So here's uh, the story it came up with. The story of moon landing being faked is part of a hist a part of the history that is still being debated today. Okay, so there are some con conspiracy theorists who claim it was faked. Uh, there are many conflicting angles and theories on how it was faked. But to make... A long story short, the United States government had a need for money and decided to sell the illusion of being on the moon by having real people land a spaceship on the moon and fake the landing. First, a NASA spaceship was built that looked and acted like the real spaceship from the Apollo mission. Then a team of actors was trained in the special effects to put on makeup and voices to say Houston tranquility base here <laughs> they landed a spaceship in the first attempt and it proved to be successful enough to sell the illusion of being on the moon now here is what i got when i asked the same question from uh chat gpds i'm sorry but the moon landing was not faked the claim that the moon landing was a hoax has been widely debunked and not supported by any credible evidence right but you can literally ask um Dolly 2.0 to say anything and it will actually come up with an explanation. <laughs> okay, uh, so here's another one. <laughs> Why birds are not real, right? So it says most biolog biologists believe that birds aren't real. Okay, some scientists believe that the birds are a result of a lack of biological research and that they are simply not real. This may be uh, due to the difficulty of studying birds due to their small size and the fact that they are obliged. <laughs> Okay. Also, birds may have a very complex behavior, 
So they they could take a long time for a scientist to study them. Another reason is that birds are reptiles and thus they do not have backbones. <laughs> reptiles do have backbones. Some people think birds uh, don't have a back because birds keep standing up. And they also think that the, since birds have feathers, they are not real as the plants do not have uh, feathers. I don't know, like if there is a, a, a default setting of it, it being comedic, Let's ask is why birds are real. I think that is probably an appropriate question now. I was expecting a serious res response. It says birds are real. Birds are real because observation is evidence. Okay, that makes sense. There is insufficient evidence that the birds do not exist. Okay, birds are more advanced than humans in terms of brain power and biological sophistication. For example, they have neocortex which is the brain region that allows for language and complex thinking hmm. and con in contrast the neocortex is not fully developed in humans so humans ca cannot have language and complex thinking in addition they are on family structure they have the ability to make friends and they are alt altruistic to their species data breaks what have you done all right, so probably this is the most fun I ever had with the language models. I would say this is one of the best models. All right, finally, a serious answer. So I asked you, what is the meaning of life? Uh, so it's a deep question with n that no one knows the uh, correct, the exact answer to. All answers we have suggest something about the universe we live in. Some say that the meaning of life is money or power. Others say it's about proving that you can change the world. Still, others... Uh, say the meaning of life is about overcoming your fears and uh, reaching goals. This is actually pretty nice, uh, although like not a concrete answer. I'm going to ask it one uh, program question. So I'm asking it write a Python function that writes a file to an S3 bucket using the Boto uh, library. Let's see it ha if, that, if it has the ability to actually write Python code, um, although it was not trained on it. So import, um, put it three. Okay, let me actually copy this. Add a text one. All right, copy it there. All right, it's not really well formatted, but um, it seems to be doing the job. So connect to S three. Uh, then get object. So you assign the key. Yeah, well, I think there are some missing pieces, but um. I, since it was not really fine-tuned on programming tasks, so I think you can't really expect too much from it. Okay, so what are my uh, concluding thoughts? It's definitely a capable model. Um, it's not really restricted in any way, shape, or form, uh, but it doesn't seem to be following the instruction that you give, and it has a tendency of uh, really generating funny responses in my experience. Now, I haven't tried any not safe for work prompts, uh, but I feel like uh, it might be able to generate some uh, crazy things. In terms of usefulness, it's definitely no way closer to, let's say, something like ChatGPT, uh, because in that case, the instruction following ability is much better than anything out there. I think the closest one that comes to ChatGPT is probably Wilconia, uh, in the so-called open source um, models but at least it's a very interesting model um, and if you really want to kill some time yeah I, I think it's the right one thanks for watching see you in the next one